Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for our MA Fine Art Drawing course introduction. I'm just going to give it a few moments just to allow everyone to come in from the waiting room and then I'll get started with how the session is going to work today. Okay. I think that's everyone in. Uh, so first of all, my name's Hannah. I'm the Student Recruitment and Marketing Manager at Camberwell College of Arts. And today I'm joined by Sarah Woodvine, who is the Pathway Leader for MA Fine Art Drawing. And between the both of us today, we're going to give you an introduction to Camberwell as a college, what it's like to study with us. And Sarah will give you an overview of the course itself. Now, during the session today, all of your microphones are muted and none of your webcams are visible to either us or anyone else in the audience. There will be an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have, but what we'll do is we'll take questions at the very end of the session. Please do feel free to start typing your questions into the Q&A box as we go through the presentations. You should be able to see that on your menu bar, two little speech bubbles and a Q&A. Click into that and you can type your questions and they'll come directly through to us and we'll take them at the end. After the session today, I will be sending you a follow up email and that will include a link to the recording and also I'll include any useful resources and links that were mentioned in the presentation. So you'll have everything all in one place for reference. OK, so let me get started with a bit of an introduction to Camberwell, first of all. So Camberwell College of Arts, we are part of the University of the Arts London, known as UAL. And UAL is made up of six separate colleges, and each of our colleges has a different specialism or different approach to their subject. Now, across those six colleges, we have over 20,000 students, so that's a huge creative network for you to come and join. Once again, we have been ranked second in the world for art and design subject area in the QS World Rankings. But coming back to Camberwell itself, so Camberwell as a college is a really unique place to study. Uh, we recently celebrated being 125 years old and Camberwell was built to be an art and design school. And you'll see the history reflected in the architecture of the building if you come to study or visit us. We have the original Victorian building, the Brutalist main entrance. And in recent years, we've also added a new academic building, which houses new technical resources, studio spaces and also new social spaces for our students as well. The ethos of the college is very much about rethinking current practices and cultivating new. And we very much embrace both traditional craftsmanship, but also new digital technology as well. And whilst our students are with us, we really want you to find your own path and explore your freedom, have the freedom to explore your individuality through your practice. Our location, so we are based in South East London and we are at the heart of a creative community. Uh, we are surrounded by galleries, project spaces, studio spaces, pop-ups. Our next door neighbour is the globally renowned contemporary art space, the South London Gallery. So there's a real thriving local art scene and the college itself is part of that. Aside from that, there's also plenty of places to eat, drink and socialise locally, both in Camberwell and Peckham. And we're surrounded by lots of lovely independent businesses. Camberwell has a campus feel. We have four halls of residence within easy walking distance of the college, the closest being Gardens House, which is pictured here. And that's literally a 30 second walk from the front door of the college. Now, although we are based in South East London, we have great transport links to central London. So our students can really take advantage of the amenities of the city. Now, aside from being part of the Camberwell community, at UAL, we also have something called the Postgrad Community. And that was set up to help our postgraduate taught and our research students come together to collaborate, network and create together. And we do that through a diverse programme of cross-disciplinary events. These include things like reading groups, um, visits to major exhibitions, visits to artist studios, industry spaces, also, uh, we have lots of student led activities, so things like skill and knowledge exchanges and um, also sharing of research activity at UAL. So there's plenty of opportunities for you to network with our wider postgraduate community beyond just Camberwell. If you're interested in finding out a little bit more about our postgrad community, you can have a look at the stories on their web page and I'll link to that in the follow up email. You can also have a look on their social platforms. They're at UAL PG community on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And once you're enrolled with us as a student, you can also sign up to the internal newsletter and that will tell you all of the events that are going on uh, by month. Now, support on site for our students. So we have our UAL student services. Now, these include our student advisory service. So they, that includes things like finance, finance, immigration specialists, 
also academic support, counselling, health advice, multi-faith chaplaincy service, and also our disability support service. Now, all of these are staffed in on site at Camberwell, but we also have a central hub in High Holborn, which is in central London, and some students prefer to attend those services there. All of these are completely confidential and free of charge to our students. We also have a fantastic careers and employability team, and they work across the university with representatives for each of our colleges, and they work with our current students and also graduates on their personal and professional development. So their services include things like mentoring, funding opportunities, opportunities to showcase and exhibit your work. Uh, we have something called Not Just a Shop, which is a retail unit in High Holborn, but also an online shop. And lots of our students apply to have their work stocked and sold through that. And they also have something called, we also have something called Arts Temps, which is our in-house temping agency. Now, if you are maybe looking for flexible part-time work to support yourself whilst you study, Arts Temps is a great opportunity to find those types of opportunities. Uh, once you're enrolled, you can sign up and then you are enrolled on a database and different opportunities come through. They can range from admin support work to uh, helping to install exhibitions, bar work, event work. So there's a whole variety, but it's always paid the minimum London wage per hour and it's really flexible so you can make it work around your study timetable. In terms of entry requirements for our MA courses, so we are looking for a BA degree or an equivalent academic qualification and in your application you will need to give us evidence of your ability in your chosen subject area and you'll demonstrate that through your personal statement and your digital portfolio of work. Now if you've not come from a traditional academic background and you have maybe different types of qualifications that's absolutely fine we will take that into consideration and also other relevant experience. You'll just need to detail that in your personal statement. Now, if English isn't your first language, you will need to provide evidence at enrolment of an English language qualification. So that means that you can apply to the course before you've completed this qualification. For the MA Fine Art Drawing, we would be looking for an IELTS level 6.5 overall with 5.5 in each of the skills. So in reading, writing, listening and speaking. If you hold a different type of English language qualification, we do accept other qualifications other than IELTS. Please do look on our English language page of our website and we're constantly updating that for qualifications that will meet our entry requirements. The fees for next academic year, so for our MA courses, 15 months. If you're a home fee payer, it would be 13,330. And if you're an EU or international fee payer, it would be 28,570. Now, it is possible to pay your tuition fees in instalments rather than in one lump sum. So it means that you set up on enrolment instalment payments. So those are spread across the time that you're studying with us. There are different sources of postgraduate funding to help you with your tuition fees. So if you studied at UAL before, we do offer our UAL graduates a 20% discount on MA tuition fees. If you're a home fee payer, we also have some postgraduate scholarships available, a £7,000 fee waiver. And there are two routes of eligibility. One is means tested and one you apply for. Now, we do have application deadlines for those. The first one being in July 2024 and the next one, the 1st of November 2024. But when you apply, you will be sent details of these. If you're an international fee payer, we also have some international postgraduate scholarships. We have £7,000 fee waiver scholarships available and we also have four £50,000 scholarships which are called the International Postgraduate Scholarship and Accommodation Award. Now these £50,000 scholarships cover your tuition fees and also accommodation at one of the UAL halls of residence and it can also contribute towards your living costs whilst you're studying with us. As with all of these funding opportunities, eligibility criteria do apply and you'll be receiving an email detailing all of our postgraduate funding so you can have a look through the different details of what's available. Now, there is also the postgraduate master's loan scheme from Student Finance. So you can apply for a loan of up to £12,167 towards your cost of study. Now, this loan is paid directly to the student, so it doesn't come to the university. And that means that you can manage that money as you wish. You can use it towards your tuition fees. You could split it between living costs, material costs. It's up to you to manage that loan. The loan is paid directly to you in three instalments across the time of study. And you 
repayment begins once you finish your course and you reach a certain earnings threshold, which is uh, set each year by the student finance company. If you've taken out an undergraduate student loan, it works in a very similar way, but you will repay your undergraduate student loan and your postgraduate master's loan at the same time once you finish study. There are eligibility and residency criteria that apply for this loan. One of the key ones being that if you have studied a master's course or an equivalent level qualification previously, you would not be eligible for this loan, even if you have self-funded. In that finance uh, email that will follow up, they'll link to the fees and funding calculator. Really useful. You can enter in all your details, course of interest, your uh, household income, and it will tell you what loans or scholarships you may be eligible for whilst you study. Now, the application process, it is all done online with us. So you will need to include a personal statement, which is a maximum of 500 words. In this statement, it's about telling us about why you want to apply for the course, your research interests, and any supporting experience or evidence that you can include to support your application. We'd then be asking you to upload a digital portfolio, and we have lots of guidance available on our website, and I'll link through to that. So it shows you PebblePad, which is the platform that we use for you to upload your portfolio. It's a maximum of 30 pages and on our course pages we have the criteria that we use to assess each portfolio. We'll also ask you to submit a short video task, two to three minutes, and it's just for us to get to know you a little bit better and um, for you to tell us about you and your research intentions and it's submitted alongside your portfolio. So we have three pieces to really help us get to know you, your personal statement, your video task, and your digital portfolio. You'll then be invited to an online interview, which is about 15 to 20 minutes long, and you'll book that via the UAL portal. Now, the UAL portal is where everything will happen for your application. So on the course pages of the website, you click through to apply now, and it'll ask you to set up an account. So your email and create a password, and that will give you your login to the UAL portal. Through the portal, you'll submit your personal statement, your digital portfolio, your video task, and then you'll also be asked to book your interview through there. We'll also communicate the outcome of your application via the portal. So it's really crucial that you keep checking back. In terms of deadlines for applications, so we do two rounds of deadlines. The first one is coming up on Wednesday, the 13th of December. And the second one is on Wednesday, the 3rd of April. So we have two deadlines for you to consider. After today, there's still more ways you can find out about studying with us. I mentioned that portfolio advice webpage, really useful, would really uh, advise having a look at that. There's lots of specialised information around postgraduate applications on there. The course page of the website will give you an overview and also that is where you go to apply. Campus tours, we run these monthly. So if you'd like to come and visit Tambua, have a look around, see the facilities, you can book onto one of those via the open day page of our website. We'll also be running an on-site postgraduate open day in the new year and we'll contact you when the dates are available. So if you'd like to come to visit Camberwell and be able to meet academic staff, current students, and have more in-depth experience on site, I'd recommend coming to the on-site open day rather than the campus tour. We are also running some UAL discovery webinars, uh, which cover things like accommodation services. So maybe if you're thinking about halls of residence, whilst you study with us, uh, we'll also be doing some postgraduate application and portfolio advice uh, webinars as well. So keep an eye out for those. Okay, well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Sarah, who's going to give you an introduction to the course overall. There we go, over to you, Sarah. Hi, everybody. Okay, can you see my screen okay? Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so hello, I am the pathway leader for MA Drawing at Camberwell College of Arts, and I'm very pleased to meet you all today and to tell you a bit more about the course. So um, MA Drawing, what's it all about? So Camberwell has long been renowned within British education for the teaching of drawing and forging of new alignments that have influenced the theorization of art. And that's a really positive quote about what goes on at Camberwell in terms of drawing research from Kelly Corpening and Rebecca Fortnum in the recent publication, A Companion to Contemporary Drawing, which is a major book about drawing research and an overview of what's going on with contemporary drawing practice. 
The current resurgence of drawing in recent years is perhaps the first moment in history when artists can opt for drawing as their primary medium. So what do we mean by that? So drawing has obviously always existed, it's always happened, but what's happened in the last years is it's become understood as a practice, as a research medium in its own right. So that means that now we can directly look at the theory, research and practice concerned directly with drawing. So why would you want to come and study on the MA in Fine Art Drawing at Camberwell? So right now, um, what's really exciting about drawing is how it's established within the contemporary art world. There are two ex exhibition spaces dedicated to drawing, one at the Drawing Centre in New York and the Drawing Room in London, which has recently reopened in a new specially dedicated space with learning resources and a major library collection. But still, why would you think about coming to study drawing? Well, I think there's never been a more interesting time to explore the possibilities of contemporary drawing practice. The current resurgence of drawing in recent years is perhaps the first moment in history when artists can opt for drawing as their primary medium. But why would you undertake this course at Camberwell? It's all about creativity and challenging yourself within an intensive, creative and critical art college environment in London. So within London, there are many, many resources to support your research and studying concerning drawing, many museums, galleries. As I said, the Drawing Room London is an extensive international um, practice that, that, that supports the research and exhibition of contemporary drawing. But what we're thinking about here on the MA in drawing is the expanded field. And what do we mean by the expanded field in drawing? So what we mean by that is that drawing has become a, an extremely expanded practice. So this is something that we saw happen within sculpture in the way that sculpture moved from just three dimensional objects into installation, filmmaking, performance, video. So drawing in the same way has expanded into the interpretation of space, light, form, time-based practice, film, video, traditional drawing methodologies, but really it's very much based in what's driving your interests. What, what are you coming to in terms of drawing, uh, in terms of how you might want to research your practice? So MA Drawing asks students to test, redefine and expand the limits of contemporary drawing, it considers drawing as a starting point, an iteration, a framework, or a possible ending. It's firmly rooted in making. The pathway encourages risk-taking and material exploration. It is supported by rigorous research and continual engagement with contemporary art practice and theory. So here's an image from um, one of the exhibitions we've done off-site at the Saatchi Gallery. So we're thinking about creative practice, critical thinking, collaborative, professional autonomy when we're thinking about how we're approaching drawing as a subject. We're also very much grounded in the UAL creative attributes, which are about developing ethical and wide ranging qualities and behaviours that prepare for the future and sustain a rewarding professional life. So we're thinking about where you're going after you've studied on this MA um, course in drawing. Um, this course will empower you within your creative thinking to build resilience as a professional artist, how you, how you come to understand creative collaboration, working with others, working interdisciplinary, and your entrepreneurial skills. So how might you take your practice forward? How might that be realized in the art world? And how might you build and sustain a practice? So in terms of the course structure, there are three units and they involve artist talks, group crits, independent practice and research, knowledge exchange with external agencies, lectures, presentations of work through exhibitions, professional toolkit, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment, 
We also do reading groups that are specifically directed at drawing research. We do seminars, one-to-one -one tutorials, workshops and inductions. And the workshops and inductions create a huge foundation for the course when you enter the MA in drawing. They situate your making in different contexts and enable you to understand how you want to start driving your practice forward, very firmly rooted in drawing research. So the three course units build towards your knowledge, your awareness of your practice, becoming a more independent practitioner and becoming a professional artist when you leave the course of study. It's a 15 month course of study. And in unit one, we focus very much on the aims of your research inquiry. So you're asked to write a proposal, which we support you with. We give you feedback on that, direct you with support for your developing research. We enable you to write an artist statement. We ask you to document the, your artworks and the process of making your work. We ask you to critically analyze and reflect on your making and your research. So thinking about how you're contextualizing your practice. What are the reference points? Who's informing your thinking about drawing research? So very much in unit one, we're, we're supporting you to establish and find out the direction of your practice. So it's not only based on your research proposal, it's based on a series of workshops and seminars that actively support you to find out how you want to develop your drawing research practice. In unit two, we start to push this contextualization further. We ask you to continue to develop your practice and document what you're doing. We work more with external resources and professional skills. So we do exhibitions off site. We work with practitioners coming in to give lectures, seminars. You also take part in the ongoing professional toolkit sessions, which are very much about um, practitioners coming in and sh sharing professional practice from all different um, angles. In unit three, which really starts in unit two, um, you're very much making your work public. And this is through a major exhibition in July and also something that we call the Research Festival, which is a presentation of your research in, a, in an, an offsite festival, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. We support you with your professional skills and future career paths, again, through the professional toolkit and through seminars and workshops in Pathway. We ask you to go much deeper into the analysis and reflection of all of the contexts that inform your research inquiry. So you're asked to write extensively and to critique the development and the context of your drawing research and practice. In terms of assessment, there are the three units which I've just mentioned. So you get um, written and verbal feedback at the end of each of those units. You're asked to create an online platform where you reflect on all of these ideas. So submission of, for assessment is by online platform um, where you have to include your analysis of these contexts that inform your research and practice all of the critical reflection about your making, but also the theories informing your work, your artist statement. So that's used for professional practice, for you to disseminate your work in the wider field of um, professional exhibiting and research platforms. You're also asked to produce a verbal presentation. So teaching, how do we teach? So we use group critique, and studio-based practice. Um, this is on a regular basis that we're either having one-to-one -one tutorials with myself or some of the academic team that work in MA drawing. We also have visiting artists. Um, we have group critiques that happen when we do exhibitions, pop-up shows, off-site shows, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a moment. We also have reading groups. We discuss texts. So seminars, discussions and research and, crit and critique are an important part of the drawing pathway. Here we have a really lovely drawing by David Shrigley, who is a drawing artist, looking at um, how we think about practice and how we understand it in a quite humorous way. 
So the course is very much supported by drawing research, um, the reading groups. We have an artist called Amber Sile Bennett, who's a recent PhD graduate. She's exhibiting internationally. She runs reading groups specifically directed to drawing research. And here's some of the examples of the sort of material that might be informing those sessions. The Drawing Room London has, has an extensive accessible research uh, resource for drawing research, also the library at Camberwell and across UAL has special specialist drawing sections in the library, you can get some support from the librarians. We've also got online um, material, different sorts of platforms and resources for drawing research. So it's absolutely huge what's going on with drawing research. There are also international symposiums taking place and really it's as far as you want to go with drawing research. Um, but of course it has to reflect back on your developing practice, your studio practice and come into alignment with your your thinking and developing research. We go to exhibitions, we visit collections. Here's a recent trip to the drawing room. Um, here we're having a talk by Mary Doyle, who is the one of the directors of the Drawing Room London. And this is the inaugural exhibition in their new dedicated space that's just recently opened this autumn in London. <clears throat> we go to, <clears throat> sorry, we also go to um, relevant exhibitions that are concerned about drawing. Here's a recent trip to Tate Modern. And here the students are standing in front of El Al Anatsui's work, which is being installed at Tate Modern. I think it's just recently opened now. So we saw the installation process taking place with this huge, immense textile structure. Recently, the graduating students that just left last week, um, they put a, put a show on in the studio when they were leaving called I Don't Understand Your Drawing. They made a publication that, that um, was disseminated for the incoming students, which looked at their drawing research and a question around really what is drawing research, which was reflected back in I Don't Understand Your Drawing. So the exhibition and the publication um, was exploring each of their journeys in relation to drawing research. So I supported and informed this project by asking the students to reflect in, in, in writing and in the exhibition on what really was a major transformative moment within their drawing research journey? What was it that happened that supported them to identify the deepening and development and the specifics of their re relationship with drawing research? So the Graduate Showcase is another point in the year where you get to present your work in a really highly professional context. This is supported by me. I work with curation. So the Drawing um, Graduate Showcase and any of the shows we do. So the previous show I just showed you, I supported the students to curate that exhibition. Um, here we've got some images of the MA graduation show. So we have here work by Yu Chi Zeng on the left hand side, Jianning Kang, which is the branch above, which has been um, embellished with silver leaf. And in the background, we have Nele Bergmans, who was working with steel and lipo print and digital print. One of the other exhibitions we did this year was called Forces of the Small, Project for an Artwork Compact and Condensed. So this was in a research space called Philae and the whole of the MA program exhibited in this project, which was questioning the miniature in contemporary art. And this was informed very much by a series of lectures and workshops with the artist, art critic, and writer, Peter Sushin. So he gave lectures around the miniature in the history of art um, and the whole of the MA in drawing and right across all of the pathways took part. So this was an exhibition of 120 students, which I curated with Peter Sushin at Philae Research Space in East London. 
We do pop-up exhibitions and um, those again happen across pathways. So it's really exciting the way in which we work within our pathways, specifically looking at research to do with our specific areas. So we've got the drawing, painting, photography, printmaking, sculpture and computational arts courses. But we also come together for the MA lecture programme, the professional toolkit, for critiques across pathway where groups get mixed up across pathway and for exhibitions. So I think it's really exciting the way we come together, we work separately and the way that students can get to work collaborative, collaboratively across pathway and really understand and situate their position with their practice in, in their context. So this coming up against each areas, these overlaps and interchanges really inform and define the area of practice that you're working within distinctly. So another major offsite exhibition we did in April and May this year was at the Barge House Gallery, which is just behind the OXO Tower Wharf. We took over the whole of this huge building it's a big industrial building with really exciting spaces um, here you can see a performance taking place and this was again a cross pathway providing huge exciting very alternative spaces to exhibit in some of my students really defined their practice through working in this context um, one of the students Susan Askew worked very specifically with the history of this building made an installation in response to the space and this helped to develop specifically um, research about um, animal welfare and human rights and ideas about human violence and Susan went on to develop a what she calls a future museum, which is set in 2063. It's called the, hum the, the Museum of Human Violence. So she's looking at how um, we would understand ourselves looking back from the future and the kind of wrongs we've made as, as a society. Here is um, something we've just completed the week before last, which is the MA Fine Art Research Festival. It took place at a gallery in Deptford called APT, beautiful space, which also has multiple studios, a long history of really exciting exhibitions. And here we have Rene Odija giving a talk about making conversation, which was the title of this project. So here she was talking about collaboration, curation, working with different diverse groups. And this project included self-publishing, artist books and zines, podcasts, essays in an online platform, performances and workshops. And this was a week long event. And here you can see on the bottom right, one of the workshops taking place on the left, one of the many publications about student research that were included in this project. So there, there were over a hundred publications on show. Um, again, we do all sorts of offsite projects. Um, so this is just an example of, 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 of a project with Mark Fannington working with um, Camberwell College of Arts and the Horniman Museum asking questions around the post-colonial museum and our role with climate emergency. So as I said with unit one we start off very much with practical studio-based workshops. Here we have a workshop um, looking at Windsor and Newton materiality. We have a high level of technical expertise with our technicians. This is Craig Horsfall. He is an ex-conservator and runs workshops in making pigments, um, histories of paper, working with risograph. We do um, workshops on um, how to present work, how to do climate control, um, preservation of artworks. So all of this expertise very much informs research and making on the drawing pathway. We also have another um, technician called Pete Roberts, who is a specialist in printmaking, um, in, in exhibiting, in working with sculpture, 
really they can do anything that we need and they run a whole series of workshops we also do what we call academic and technical tutorials whereby i sit with pete roberts and we look at your work and we help speed up the way in which you connect to technical workshops in the university and specific methodologies in those technical workshops. So Pete Roberts being a specialist in printmaking, having run print workshops across UAL, will help you to understand which of the many, many different printing methodologies from CNC 3D digital printing to LIFO, to um, etching, what might support you with your drawing practice? We also do animation workshops. So Jeanette Thomas is a reader at the university. We think through making, which is very informed by experimentation and reflexive making. So um, we would call it disruptive innovation and creative dialogue. So when you're working in the workshops and here we have examples of the wood workshop, the metal workshop, some of the printmaking studios, you're very much working with highly specialized technicians. And this reflexive making is very much about going into these areas, developing your practice, coming back, having tutorials, reflecting on what you've done, thinking through making and experimentation, which is highly innovative. Here's an image of the 3D laser cutting, 3D printing, CNC routing um, space where we have specialist technicians. And these technical areas work across into other areas. So sometimes we have students working with um, laser cutting who bring objects back into traditional methodologies in the printmaking workshops. So this is very much looking at groundbreaking technologies, mixing up contemporary new technologies with traditional methodologies. We have an amazing workshop um, for ceramics, which is extensively used. And again, highly specialized technicians there, um, including, um, uh, yeah, a, such a strong, um, range of approach to making ceramics from hand building to mold making to graphic image transfer so this this area in the university is always packed and highly exciting um, as a space to get working with your research and practice the metal workshop here is one of the drawing students working on a construction in the metal workshop so really you can work across any of these areas. Many of the drawing students also work with casting in the foundry and with um, not only with metal casting, but also working with plaster. So in terms of creative leadership, I've mentioned the professional toolkit, which supports you in preparation for your life after graduation. Um, it specifically identifies which part of the art world you wish to contribute to after graduation. This journey supports creative leadership through honing your understanding of the tacit knowledge you possess as a creative practitioner, along with more tangible skills to do with problem solving, resourcefulness, communication, and an ability to sustain open-ended lines of inquiry. So this happens sort of every other week, professional toolkit with, toolkit with specialists coming in to support you with your journey into becoming a more professional practicing artist. We also support you to write about your practice using concise, diverse writing projects. We focus on the difference between explaining and evaluating, writing jargon free artist statements and developing creative ways of articulating your practice. So we, as um, mentioned by Hannah, we have an incredible resource in terms of the academic support in the university. So not only with the academics in Pathway, but there are academics you can go to that can support you with your research and practice and writing. The course looks beyond Camberwell College of Arts location. You'll be encouraged to share your practice in a variety of contexts, including events and exhibitions, on our UAL website, which evidences your practical research, your critical understanding and professional skills. It's also designed to promote your practice after graduation.
We actively encourage socially engaged practices from a range of perspectives, perspectives and positions. The course cohort is extremely diverse. So the teaching and learning draws upon the students' broad academic, professional and life experiences. It engages with global and post-colonial and diverse discourses. So I would say that the drawing course very much has what I would call a reactionary pedagogy in that students coming from different backgrounds, different life experiences. We very much also, um, in terms of this reactive pedagogy, we we respond to what's coming up on the course. We don't just run a course with a structured um, sort of system of events every year. We do that, but we also set up. So recently um, I inv invited the artist Janet Paris, who works with performance and who works with comic making and animation, specifically because I have a student who's very much working in this area They've come from an illustration background and are now developing their practice in terms of fine art. So last week we had a talk by Jeanette Paris. So that's an example of what I would call reactive pedagogy, that we bring in people from different backgrounds, responding very much as much as we can to the different kind of diverse um, interests and backgrounds that are presented through the individual students coming on to the MA course um, study in, in drawing. So the community is stimulating, the postgraduate community shares cutting edge ideas. Um, there are MA fine art wide crits, as I mentioned before, and cross pathway exhibitions. Um, we've exhibited at the South London Gallery, the Camberwell space, which is part of the site at Peckham Road at, at Camberwell College of Arts. South London Gallery is next door to Camberwell College of Arts, which is an international gallery with an incredible program of exhibitions. Copeland Gallery, we exhibit there in South London. We have connections with Gaswork, Beaconsfield and UK wide spaces and international spaces. So what do MA drawing students make? So as I explained before, it's really very expanded what happens within the MA drawing course of study. Here we have Xu Tong Li working very much with ideas informed by Confucian society in China, thinking very much about um, labor, control, systems. This is a series of aluminium um, folded objects with digitally screen printed images onto those objects, which transform as you walk past these forms, they move very much influenced by the historical artist, ed the photographer, Edward, Edward Mybridge. Um, so basically the image changes and transforms as you negotiate it in space. So there's a very um, sculptural element to this. So there's something that happening here between sculpture and drawing in a very interdisciplinary fashion. Here is a work by Tay Palangian, and here we have a gigantic piece of paper that's been folded, it's been drawn on the back, it's been turned over. Again, very much thinking through material practice. This is presented on a, on a structure floating off the wall, so systems of display, consideration how works are completed and presented are extremely important. This is a work by Natsuki Iwamoto, and she has been very much looking at, again, notions of display, ideas about um, space, materiality, the relationship between materials, image, um, form, she comes from a background in textiles and has worked with installation, performance. Here's another of her works, which is um, an object. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a box that incorporates a series of drawings associated very much with sort of overlooked moments from everyday life. Um, here's a work by Jiayi Lu, and she was worked very much with um, her obsession with ideas around sustainability, her relationship with spring onions and the growing and sort of like almost like a 
a perspective on on plants that that sees them anthropomorphized and um, really leveling out um, human and plant based relationships. So here you can see ceramic objects being presented in relation to living plants that she has grown herself. This is um, a series of works by Michaela Degatti, and these are objects that have animations, drawn linear forms housed in the objects. Her work is very much looking at ideas around embodied experience. She is an ex Pilates teacher and has very much looked at her relationship um, with her body and space and environment. Here's another image of Michaela's work. And again, this very um, focused relationship with display and curation. If you look at the leads coming out of these um, animation structures, they are pink. So there's all this reference to the body. Um, there's even little bits of pink blue tack that position these objects. Um, so there's this very precise sense of drawing being enacted even even in the way the leads are presented in relation to the objects and animations here is an installation by Raz and this is object making very much looking at ideas around um horror in relation to the body so there's a series of objects using human hair wooden objects um surgical instruments and this work was staged with lighting so that the objects would become also a projection and an image so ideas here around the tension between line form depicted image and object shieni shu here working with material practice um burnt and drawn surfaces so ideas around decay and um yeah, very much like ideas around fragmentation and ideas about things destructing and rebuilding. Kishwa Kiani's work here looks at world building, looks at ideas about dystopian realities, highly detailed um, drawings in charcoal. This is a massive scroll, again, highly technical in the way it was installed. Um, really problematic object and you can see at the bottom of the image there's there's charcoal it's a rolled and scrolled very large scale work and here's some of the detail from that image so Kishwa's work was very much informed by architecture um, coming from India to London she became fascinated by the um, difference in um, the way buildings become scaffolded and decayed and rebuilt in, in, in sort of comparison to how buildings are dealt with in India. But also this underlying sense of dystopia, um, destruction and, and a, a, a sense of um, real sort of apocalyptic um, foreboding in these works. Nelle Bergmans is a recent graduate. I'm going to talk about her again in a moment. I mentioned her before. So here we can see in the background, large steel panels that have been silk screened with gold ink. On the left, there are very um, thin welded steel sculptures. The green um, object is a piece of folded glass that she's made in ceramics. Down in the bottom left, there is also folded glass, which is draped over the steel structures. So a highly developed um, relationship with materiality, printmaking, ceramics, glass making. Um, Nele is very interested in working with craft and architecture and ideas about the body being suspended um, in, in sort of quite vulnerable um, conditions. Um, here we have um, an installation that's a live feed. So the projection on the back wall is, um, is a live feed from the staircase directly behind this wall. So what you would see is people walking up and down the staircase. So an incredible sense of tension in this um, 
live performative and video based work. Here we have on the back wall um, a series of photographs by Pandora Wang, and she has been creating this, this visual diary, a highly aestheticized um, vision and identification with spaces and objects in her everyday experiences. This is a performative and collaborative work by Afra Babka. She did this at the Saatchi Gallery where she was, um, well, she applied to be part of a, post, a postgraduate selected exhibition. And here she's looking very much at her Middle Eastern um, experiences with um, communion, um, eating of dates, sharing of coffee. There are drawings, the, the fabrics are hand stitched or hand dyed. So this is very much um, a way of experiencing her culture exchange and th this tradition very much rooted in her upbringing and her historical culture. Um, these are drawings by Cyan Chanda, who I'm gonna talk about a little bit more in a moment. So these are drawings in ink. And this is Cyan Chanda's work with ceramics, object making. And this is Cyan's main practice again, shown at the Saatchi Gallery. And I'm going to talk about him a little bit more extensively in a moment. He works with um, tapestry and that's what you can see on the back wall. The red form is um, a highly detailed uh, piece of um, tapestry work. Here we have Hugh Goodfellow working with digital animation, working with ideas again about world building. And um, this is a sort of very, um, he's highly experienced with digital animation skills and has gone on to teach digital animation. Hey Sue Kim, um, she's currently teaching now in Seoul, in Korea. These are digital animations and she works with painting and drawing, very much looking at ideas of humour and abjection. And here we're back at an exhibition at the South London Gallery. So um, a couple of years ago, our graduate exhibition was held at the South London Gallery and there's some of the drawing artists work. So who are the MA drawing staff? This image is a work by myself and I work with drawing and it's a very um, interdisciplinary practice. I work at the threshold between drawing and sculpture. Um, I'm the pathway leader. We have academics Majib Bahati, Yu Chen Wang. We're going to have a look at some of their work in a moment. Kate Terry, Kim Pace, Paul Coldwell. And here's just a sample of some of the visiting artists that come onto the course and we're going to have a look at their work. So here are the MA Fine Art Core Teaching Team. These are the pathway leaders. So there's myself um, on the left. Matthew de Cursant Giradou runs sculpture. Geraint Evans is the pathway leader for painting. Joanna Love here in the top right hand corner is the pathway leader for printmaking. We have Francis Summers, who is the photography pathway leader, and Max Dovey, who is the computational arts pathway leader. So you can see a real range of practice going on with the pathway leaders. Here are some of the visiting artists in drawing and regular academics that teach on the pathway. So Majib Bahati works with graphic novels, with digital drawing, working with AutoCAD and Adobe Illustrator softwares. Jeanette Paris, who works with animation, comics, performance. Kate Terry, who works with architecture, um, object making. Again, Kate and I work very much at this threshold between drawing and sculpture. Yu Chen Wang, working with installation, working with um, very highly detailed drawings and working very much um, with ideas around decolonization. She's currently working with major museums, looking at archives, looking at how to reframe and represent and look at how um, we decolonize archives in museums and collections. And Jeanette Thomas works with filmmaking and animation. 
Um, here's some of the other artists. So Professor Paul Coldwell works across the pathways. He's a specialist in drawing and print. He's one of our major researchers. Kim Pace is a, a visiting artist who works with um, graphic novels, um, drawing, watercolour, painting, ceramics, object making. Mark Fannington, one of the readers who um, works with painting, works a lot with um, collections, archives, and Ian Munro, working with installation, painting, and object making. So what do graduates from MA Drawing go on to do? So they work as practicing, art, practicing artists, they exhibit their work internationally, they undertake artist residencies, they go on to do PhD study, they work in gallery and museums, set up their own businesses, become curators. So this isn't only what they, they do, this is some of the things students go on to do. And let's have a look at how they do that. So this is Nelle Bergmans, who, while she was a student on the MA drawing course, set up this um, salon called Tertulia. This is something she very much wants to continue to work with after graduation. So she invited students across Pathway to present their research. So she really created a platform for students to um, work more directly with presenting and consolidating their research. Cyan Chanda, who I mentioned before, is now an artist who graduated only three years ago from the MA drawing course. He's now represented by Javeri Contemporary, which is a major South Indian gallery which shows major international um, South Indian artists. Um, he's been represented at Freeze Art Fair. He's um, been showing all across the world and this is literally a year after graduating from the MA in drawing so really exciting to see what he's doing. Tay Palandian here she undertook a residency in Maine this summer here she is on the left helping me curate the I don't understand your drawing exhibition she is in um, communication with Sarah Z at the moment and um who is a major artist. They both studied at the same um, college. And so Tay has really been forming connections with people within the art world, doing residencies and being a really active member of the MA course drawing team to really give herself experiences that she can go on to connect with establishments, artist studios, and um, residencies and in, in a way to kind of really showcase her skills. So she's really honed a lot of these skills on the MA drawing course. Again, Nelle Bergmans, who I mentioned before, has graduated last week, but left the week before to go to India on this Arts Council residency, pro residency programme. She got selected from a huge um, level of application to this program. And she is now collaborating with an Indian artist. The work they will make together will be shown in India and will also come back to the Crafts Council in England. So this is something again that Nelly was working with extensively on her course of study. She was working with offsite projects, working with um, Raku firing, working with contemporary artists on their practice. She has also set up this project with a group of other artists called Lot Projects, where they are exhibiting and giving possibilities for research programs in this space that they co-run. Gavin Edmonds um, is not a recent graduate, but I just wanted to tell you a bit about Gavin because Gavin graduated from the MA drawing in 2014, went on to do a PhD at University of the Arts London, um, is an active member of the staff on the MA programme, teaches regularly on the painting course, and also very interesting, interestingly works with a, a programme um, that, that supports people who have experienced trauma. So he works on this programme that um, puts on exhibitions, film projects, that supports people on a draw uh, 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 on a journey of supporting their experiences with trauma. 
So a very wide reaching um, research practice and person who works in, in multiple fields. Michaela Degatti graduated last summer from MA Drawing, um, sorry, last, no last November. Um, her, her showcase was last, last summer. She immediately got taken on as the programme co coordinator at Wising Art Centre, which is a really prestigious post working with this long established programme at Wising Arts, working with international artists, working with the community and working with her research to develop um, a really highly engaged education programme. Pandora Wang graduated also the same year as Michaela, so November 2021. She has set up this um, project called Swanfall Art and has already done about four or five exhibitions in London, developing projects in China, supporting recent graduates from the MA programme, so multiple students from the MA course of study at Camberwell and across UAL have been exhibiting in her um, project Swanfall Art. So here's one of the recent exhibitions, um, November this year called Obscura, which was held at the Crypt Gallery in London. So what are we looking for? So Hannah's already framed this in her presentation. We want a personal statement, a portfolio of work and a video cut task, just so we can get to know a little bit more about what's informing your research and aims for study on this course. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm Sarah Woodfine and there's my email. So, and if you have any questions now, please do ask and I can hopefully support you. Um, to understand even more about the MA drawing course of study. And again, at the end here, why are we doing this? So the overarching reason is because the world needs new creativity and we are here to support you to realize those aims to become a highly creative professional practitioner moving forward to support the arts and um, develop yourselves as highly, capable professional artists. Thank you very much.